Yeah, man. So right now we're just we're we're in Brampton, which is uh, a very special uh, city for for me and a lot of the guys on our team. Uh, it's where I grew up, um, you know, most of my life, and and actually we're you know we're heading to a, a field that actually many of us on the team played, and um, it was a field where I did you know a lot of my development. And um, yeah, so it's, it's gonna bring back a lot of really good memories. I think it's, you know, the memories of, of being a child and, 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 you know, falling in love with the sport, really. That's, that's where you, you know, as a child, going to the field and, and waiting for that Saturday for, to come so that you can play the game. It leaves you as a kid really, you know, dreaming, dreaming uh, of really big things and wanting to do that for the rest of your life. But I think even more than that, you're just you're just happy in the moment that you're doing, you know, you're playing the sport that you love with your friends, and I think that's what I most take out of uh, those experiences as a kid. My childhood, man, my childhood comes to mind. Uh, just great memories, memories playing on these pitches with with my friends just because you love the sport, right? And, and even I think at that time, like, you, you try to be your idols on the pitch and I, that's what it's about, right? And so I was, we were always trying to be everybody and, and play on this pitch and, and you dream, you dream of one, one day getting to that stage and it's, it's, it's pretty surreal that now, you know, we came from playing on these pitches and now we're gonna play in, in, in a World Cup. When you look at that World Cup, I don't know what it says to you, what it speaks to you, but it tells me biggest event on the planet. The date, the date is, is March 20th, 20, 2021. 2021. And it has been 16 months since Canada's men's national team was last able to come together as a full group. Still unable to play home matches in Canada, owing to the ongoing border restrictions due to COVID-19, the team is now gathering here in Orlando, Florida, where after a delay of over a year, it will begin the qualifying process for the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar. Baby. With little time to waste ahead of Canada's first match versus Bermuda, head coach John Herdman has called a team meeting where he will make clear the mission that now awaits this group. We're back, and we're back for one reason, to qualify for a World Cup. So I dreamed of this as a kid, right? I remember pretending I was Romario, eh? Down on 
rugby, rugby pitch. That's as close as I got. We haven't been together for 16 months, some of this group, and we're gonna, in four days time, be on a field together um, in a way that will mean everything to this country if we, if we get the win. And if we don't, then we just become another group of Canadians that, that failed. But you guys are this close to it, this close being 20 games, yeah? But that's as close as some people ever get in their careers and their lifetimes. So as a group of men, don't underestimate the opportunity. And when you look at that World Cup, I don't know what it says to you, what it speaks to you, but it tells me, biggest event on King planet, the world stops. Dreams are made, heroes are recognized. The only sport for me that genuinely lifts a country to a place it's never been before. It's just been a, a whirlwind, you know, finding ways to get players released from Europe into, into the US. There's been all sorts of red tape. We've, we've had to find solutions to, to cut through and we're here. We, we've got our, in my opinion, our best squad, you know, give or take one or two players. And I think that lets you know how serious we're taking these games. But more importantly, how excited the, the players are to get back together to wear this red shirt. When I first took over, I ran around a lot of people, sent out surveys to figure out why you do what you do, why you actually come and represent Canada. And the three words people kept putting down were legacy, to become heroes, and the glory of competing. It gains a terrifying momentum. That's what it gains, a terrifying momentum. This red shirt, this team. It consumes everything in its path. Bermuda, Cayman Islands, Aruba, Suriname. The teams in the Gold Cup, the Octagon, and then you'll be ready. What a fucking journey. There are 23 players in Orlando, fighting for a place in the starting 11 that will see Canada take its first steps on the road to Qatar. Yo, the camera's on the back <laughs> Amongst that group, there are two players who for very different reasons are capturing the imagination of Canadian fans. The first is Atiba Hutchinson, who at 38 years old has surprised many by returning to the team for what will be an unprecedented fifth cycle of World Cup qualifying. Coming into this qualifying campaign is uh, it's something special. Uh, it's something I didn't really think would ever you know, happen again for me. And uh, just to have that opportunity to, to be involved uh, you know, for this game. Uh, with this, you know, young, talented group, uh, you know, a great group of players. Um, it's exciting for me, you know, I'm, I've, I've really been looking forward to it ever since, uh, you know, me and John spoke and I made the decision to, to come in, putting on the jersey and just uh, experiencing that feeling and having that joy again of, of representing the country and playing another qualifier. He's willing to keep fighting for this country. He, he knows that we're on the cusp of something and at times it's that presence, it's that leadership, the on-field presence, the off-field presence that, that takes teams to that next level. I've seen it with Christine Sinclair and I feel Atiba's got that same impact. The second man making headlines is Alfonso Davies, a player who since last putting on a Canada shirt in 2019 has risen to the very top of world football. To have the joy of having reconnecting with these guys is amazing. Like I said, we haven't seen each other in, in let's say 18 months, a year and a half. It's, it's been long, so you know, seeing each other's faces, you know, we can you can tell that we're really excited to get back on the field with the, the national team, you know, ready to put on the, the red and white. These are his brothers. He he'll come back to his his Canadian family, his football family, and he relishes that opportunity. 
There's never any hesitancy from Alfonso. It's never who are we playing, where are we playing. Given everything he's got going on, it's just, you know, when are we playing again? <laughs> Almost two years I haven't yeah. seen the boys, yeah, but it was nice seeing, you know, them now. Playing with them, playing against them in training, so it's good. Why are you lying? I'm happy. Just tell me, why are you Especially lying? Especially Milan, I miss Milan the most. To make a World Cup, it's something missing for me, for sure. Never really got close enough to it, so... And as I said, I think there's a lot to come for Canadian football. What the World Cup means to me, it means everything. Uh, not just for me, you know, the whole team, a whole country. I think that's top of the top for every footballer. For us to make it, I think for everybody it will be a jaw-dropping opportunity. If it's true that every great sporting journey starts amidst the shadows, far from the adoring eyes of the eventual public, then there could be no more fitting venue for the kickoff of Canada's odyssey towards Qatar than this. Here, thousands of kilometers from home soil, in a stadium with no fans at all, Canada will take its very first steps towards the biggest tournament in world sports. Canada's first test will be against Bermuda, a side they are heavily favored to beat. But with the condensed qualifying format leaving no margin for error, tensions are high, as the team knows that drop points of any kind could spell disaster on the early road to Qatar. Gets in, Alfonso Davies, Cavallini in the middle, off the bar! Here, here is Davies around the goalkeeper, Eve comes out, Davies across, Laren this time, takes it himself, Laren! No doubt about it! Kyle Laren doubles Canada's lead. Ball played through, here is Lorea, Richie Lorea! Canada three, Bermuda no score. The crossovers, good ball across. Morian with some rare work to do, and that's in the back of the net. Mistake by Canada out of absolutely nothing. And here is Davies. He has options. Alfonso Davies plays it back, and this time, no mistake. Hat trick hero, Kyle Laren. He's loving it. Miller across, that's in. Easy as can be. First appearance, first Canada goal, Theo Corbianu. So what this World Cup window is for, ladies and gentlemen, spread the word. Canada soccer is on the rise and much to be proud of. Well done, son. Good stuff. Excellent, Excellent. Good luck. Well done, big man. Well done. Come here, you big man. Well done. 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 Well The quest for Qatar is now officially underway. Canada have opened their campaign with a 5-1 dismantling of Bermuda. The following morning, the team packs its bags to make the two-hour journey to Sarasota, Florida, where it will now shift its focus towards the second match versus the Cayman Islands. One, one. Oh, oh, hey, hey. Ball 
Yes! Yes, man! So when you watch Man City, and I know what you're going to say, guys, but with John, there's no space to run in behind. You don't need space, you've just got to make the run. If you make the run, we've got the talent to find the pass. So don't tell us there's no depth, you make the depth. Okay, we'll see you out there. Canada's on-field work for the day is done. But with kickoff soon approaching, staff in the team medical room are now busy ensuring the players are physically ready for their next battle. You always with your boxers and stuff, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have an appointment? Just chilling here. Uh-huh. I can't be. Is, is that... There's nothing that, loud here. Is that mask working for you? The mask, the thing, do you think you're Zorro? Stick it over your nose. You look like Zorro. All right, go down and touch your toes for me. At the helm of the operation is veteran physiotherapist Greg Bay. And up, go to the left. There you go. Yeah. Uncle Greggy is uh, is super important to the team. You know, he's a, he's a funny dude. Always has, uh, you know, a little joke to, to plug in while you're getting treated from here. So it's always fun. And uh, he has seen uh, many faces, you know, in this program and, and just in his career as a, as a physiotherapist. And, uh, you know, uh, being part of this medical staff uh, that we have, uh, it's, it's a luxury to have him. Push down. Push down, push down, push down, two more. Well, the first thing I approach it with is the fact that I absolutely enjoy it. Like, I still get up every day excited to, to go to work. But in 1985, Tony Waiters asked me if I would like to take a year off of school and be the trainer with the World Cup team and go to Mexico. And I grew up a hockey guy, I loved soccer, but my dream was to lift the Stanley Cup, not to raise the World Cup. And at that time I said, gee, Tony, I don't think I can take a year off of school to go to the World Cup. And who'd have thought 36 years later, I want to be there, I want to be there, not I want to be there, I want to be there through a contribution, I want to be there with my team. What do you do always is shake between exercises? It just loosens the hip joint up a little bit so that we're able to Sometimes you can get just a little bit of a yeah. hinge in there, so just freeze it up. It's like a reset, right? Like taking an Etch-a-Sketch and doing this and then starting over again. Uh, for sure, for sure. When you work with, uh, you know, guys like that, uh, you obviously play for yourself, the country, but you play for the guys that are here, you know, to put you under the best conditions possible. The most important thing is that he's very uh, professional and he knows what he's doing. So uh, you want a guy like that in your team, that's for sure. Before taking the next steps in their own qualifying journey, Canada's senior players have gathered to watch their younger brothers, Canada's under-23 team, take on Mexico in a decisive qualifier for the Tokyo Olympics. Defeat for Canada's under-23s marks the end of one qualifying campaign for the country. But as the sun rises in Florida, it again marks the dawn of Canada's journey towards the promised land of the FIFA World Cup. I had a great chat with the leaders on Sunday, and the mission became very clear. Uh, and if I'm sitting here today, like I've been pacing around my room, ready to come in, but I, I just want to be part of what this is on the field today because it's about making history. If that's a mission to go make history, how many men get out of bed and say, Fuck it, I'm making history today? How many people get that chance? You, people you know, I get a chance to go make some history. Some people not even in their lifetime get close. And what I've heard from this group of leaders is the performance is going to be absolutely ruthless. A ruthless performance. 
where you literally put your foot on the throat of the opposition and you just squeeze and do not give a f about it. Because whatever stands in our way from making history, we go through it, around it, or over it. I don't know what you're going to be first at. Are you going to be the first team to score the biggest goal margin in CONCACAF history? I don't know. Whatever you've got to do to make history tonight, you can do it. Heading into the match versus the Cayman Islands, John Herdman has tasked his team with making history by setting a new single match goal scoring record. To live up to their coach's demands, the team will have to score nine or more goals against their opponents. Back across, wide open. Is that in? Did that cross the line? Off the bar and down. Scramble, and that's in. No doubt about that. Ferrer over the top, Walderspoon across, very unselfish, back of the net, 2-0 Canada. Here's Mark anthony K to Walderspoon, he has all kinds of time. David Walderspoon, he gets his first Canada goal, make it three in the 25th minute. Alfonso Davies taken down, this time penalty given. Davies five goals for country. Make it six. Mark Anthony K. they're gonna give it. Believe it, Mark Anthony. His first Canada goal. Rubianu. Inside the six wall, this move lays that back, Alistair Johnston! Same out of Kubi, good. It's an excellent ball. Calm finish as well. Good finish right there. Lucas Cavallini makes it 8 nothing Canada. That equals the most goals that the Canadian men's national team have ever scored in the game. It's Junior Hoylet, he's in. Hoylet goes down, penalty. K saved, gets his own, what a save again, and hold this. Great ball, Eustachio has a great range of passing. Hoylet, yes, Cavallini, diving header, a 10 spot. Hoylet, inside the area. Cavallini comes on and scores a hat trick. Finish this off, fella. It'll be one, two, mission complete. Okay. Ready? Yeah. One, two, mission complete! 